Hello, welcome. The parts of a footprint or land pattern can get really confusing because they hold so many elements. So in this video, I'll clear up that confusion by showing you which layers in ORCAD apply to the ideal IPC compliant footprint and why they're used. Okay, so as an example, we have the QFN land pattern details for QFN package. But for this package, I will explain how we can make this an ORCAD or what the elements are in ORCAD. And this is to answer somebody's question about the different assembly classes or the different classes and subclasses in PCB editor. So you may want to sit tight if you're curious about or finally want to get the answers about what are all these layers for a PCB footprint. So first of all, what's a PCB land pattern? Just quickly, it's the official name of a PCB footprint which is an area on a PCB you would place the device onto. For more information, you can watch my video where I explain a footprint in a lot more detail and depth. All right, now the, there are different classes and subclasses in ORCAD. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So in ORCAD, you would go to your display co color visibility. Depending on the version of ORCAD you're using, you might go under setup uh, colors as well. So it just depends. I'm going to move my color dialog box over here. It's really large. All right. We have all these different layers in the color dialog box. There's stack up areas, geometry components. It's really can be overwhelming if you don't know what's going on. This is why I stress the importance of knowing the layers that go into a footprint or a printed circuit board first, understand this first before you go into your CAD software tool or as you're going through your CAD software tool because all the tool does is help you execute on what's supposed to be here already. You should be able to draw this and define these layers by hand, okay? The tool just implements what you should already know. All right. Now the stack up, we have conductor, non-conductor. I'm going to explain all of these colors because these control what we see on the canvas. So if we turn this off, everything disappears for that footprint. Turn everything on. All right. Now, how do we gain more understanding about these layers? These are called classes and subclasses. This is how ORCAD groups them. And your classes are on the left. These are larger groups. And then the subgroups would be called subclasses. And then you can even go further down into that. There may be names for subclasses that are the same, but they are all unique. For instance, if we have geometry, board geometry, silk screen, top, that's different from package geometry, silk screen top. If you want more information on that, you can go to help and there will be more details explained. What I pulled up was a PDF that talks about all this stuff. So here's the PDF. I printed it out from the help section of this, of ORCAD PCB editor. There's a lot of useful information here and they explain very nicely what classes and subclasses are in layout editors. Essentially, in PCB editor or any CAD software, really, it's like Photoshop or Inkscape. If you're creating a photo digitally, it, there are multiple layers you do to create that drawing. And then you squish those layers all together and you create a complete drawing. So that's what PCB editor does. And instead of layers, they call them classes or subclasses. And then when you're done, they're saved in what's known as a drawing file and then saves that as a symbol once you're done compiling everything. All right, now that you understand the framework for these drawings, let's talk about each element. All right, first of all, we have the QFN. If we look at this, right, according to IPC, now this is a PDF, this is a presentation by Tom Hosher, the PCB library's president, and he is one of the primary authors of the IPC standard. So you want to listen and read any documents that this person has written. Okay. And we're going to start from the top left for every footprint needs a silkscreen pin one polarity. Which class does this map to? 
let's go to PCB editor. This maps to the, if we open our color wheel, the package geometry. So you go under geometry, package geometry, and you go to silk screen top. So if I turn everything off and do silk screen top, this is what it is. This is pin one here. And that's what it's talking about when it says silk screen one polarity. That's visible to humans. All right. And that helps us with assembly and placement. Next, assembly pin one polarity. Why do we have assembly pin one polarity and silk screen? It's because assembly pin one polarity is for machines. And which layer would that be? Well, we would go to, we would turn our layers off or a class and subclass. The class would be package geometry again and subclass assembly top. Here we go. And here's the pin one polarity. This depicts the boundary of a package on the assembly drawing. If you want the definitions that I talk about, they are all in this PDF or in the help section. You scroll down and then look at the definitions for these classes. All right, moving on. Next, we have the perfect IPC 7351 LAN size calculation. It's just the pin. All right. It is just talking about the pin. We turn these off and then you would go to stack up conductor pin top. And this is what it's talking about. This is defined. These pins are defined using pad stack editor, but I won't get into that. That's a different video. So that is the land size that they're talking about. This is just the land. Next is the one to one scale paste mask on all thermal lands. What's paste mask? Well, Paste mask top is under package geometry. Paste mask top creating stencil for assembly only needed for surface mount devices. If you want more information on what the full paste mask is, if you don't know, then you want to look at my video where I explain paste mask for the layers. But how is this defined? Let's go into PCB editor and you want to look at stack up non conductor pin. And here we have paste mask. And actually, let's turn everything off and then show you the paste mask. See, now you also want package geometry paste mask top. If you go to geometry package geometry, you want to add in this paste mask top, which we'll talk about or show later and you would combine them. But for now, for the pin, this is the stack up non conductor pin paste mask top we're looking at. All right, what do we have next? Next is the center of gravity origin. What's defined? How do we define this in the PCB editor? Let's turn this off and we'll go again back to geometry, package geometry. And you want the body center. There we go. What is the body center? If we go to our PDF, we have creating a text point that defines the component center. Really, it's the center of gravity for the component. Next, let's look at what else we have here. What are one solder mask size on all lands? This is the solder mask opening. This would be viewed sort of as a negative layer. Uh, and it's hard to explain. This is defined using pad stack editor. Essentially, for every pin, there is a solder mask opening and where do we find this? It's under stack up non conductor because solder mask opening is non conductive and then choose pin. It applies to pins on your footprint. See, it would apply to the pin. You can sort of guess these layers or subclasses and classes once you get used to or can PCB editor. But anyway, we want to go to stack up non conductor pin and choose solder mask top because it's surface mount. If this were a through hole device, you would choose solder mask top and solder mask bottom to, well, you would choose solder mask top still, but there would be a solder mask bottom to consider as well. But in any case, we have this as the class and subclass category. There's another thing though, include the geometry package geometry solder mask top. So you go to geometry package geometry solder mask top and add that just in case, just in case. 
Okay, what's next? We have 50% paste reduction on thermal pad broken into squares. I will show you this. So let's go here. In fact, actually, let's skip that for now. I'll, I'll get to that last. Next is the IPC7351 three tier placement courtyard external boundary. You can make a custom layer in PCB editor and call it courtyard, or you can use package geometry place bound top. So you go to package geometry, turn everything off, and choose place bound top. But here's the thing if I turn everything on, right? This place bound top goes around everything and has the and the polarity markers. This does not necessarily cover the full courtyard and the courtyard shape could be different. I they could also be uh adhering to the package geometry. Really it should be a box it looks like. Where this follows the the one in PCB editor follows the contour. But you can make your own subclass class and subclass and just call it courtyard. Let's look at the next item on this footprint list. Assembly outline map to maximum component body width 0 0.1 millimeter line width. What's this? In PCB editor, let's turn everything off and you would go to your geometry, package geometry again. This time you choose assembly top. That's what this is. That's the subclass. This is the depicting boundary of package on an assembly drawing. See, this is the limitation of the package size. But for the assembly, this is for the machine. This is under geometry, package geometry, assembly top in PCB editor. All right, let's continue to the silkscreen outline, right? We have the silkscreen outline line with 0.12 millimeters visible after assembly. In PCB editor, we can turn everything off. Again, we go to geometry, package geometry, but this time we do silkscreen top. Notice this is the same class we use for the polarity marker. It's the same thing. Just put your polarity marking and your right here, silkscreen outline line width, uh, your silkscreen outline and polarity marker on the same layer, okay? Now it says 0 0.12 millimeter line width. I like to use 0 0.127 millimeters because that's exactly the five thousandths of an inch. And doing 0 0.127 millimeter width or a line width or text width, it, uh, it helps avoid me getting DRC issues or design for manufacturing issues. Those are two separate things. When I switch the units for my PCB layout. Because see, if I use 0 0.12 millimeters exactly, I'm going to have it slightly under five thousandths of an inch. And I don't like that. Next, what do we have here? Two ref desk silkscreen and assembly drawing. I will tackle each of these separately. First, the first reference designator, ref desk assembly top. So let's go here. Every footprint needs to have a reference designator. They need to have at least two. So let's go to a different class altogether. This time we're not in geometry. We're going to components ref desk and then choose silkscreen top. According to the documentation, this is creating text for a reference designator on the top layer. This is visible for human inspection. Okay. Now what's this second reference designator? It says silkscreen and assembly drawing. So under PCB editor, let's turn off the the reference designator silkscreen top and choose components reference designator assembly top instead. That's the second reference designator they're talking about. That's the silkscreen or that's the assembly drawing reference designator. All right, moving on. We have the 0 0.1 millimeter or 0 0.15 millimeter land to land gap. This gap is defined in my dimensioning. See? where it says gap 0 0.23 millimeters, this, this beats or is compliant with that 0 0.15 millimeter. It needs to be at least this. Then we have the thermal land to land or the thermal to land gap DRC checked. You would check that in the DRC um, when you're doing your PCB layout. 
but that's this thermal land to land or thermal to land excuse me that would be from around here to the edge of this pad moving on we have the 0.12 millimeter silk to land gap automatic drc checked what is that and how do we define this the 0.12 millimeter silk to land gap is important because we don't want silk screen text or material going onto the copper pad. I explained this in the in-depth PCB footprint video. So let's go here and we want our silk to land gap to be something reasonable. Notice ours is 0.18 millimeters, which exceeds the minimum gap we need. And that's great. That's from the pad edge here to the edge of this vertex. I'm defining all of these measurements using the dimension tool, dimension environment, right click linear dimension, and then you choose your objects you want to dimension and then the text appears and all that. That's a different video though. Moving on, we have the thermal pad. The thermal pad is really up to what the manufacturer defines, but this is a pad. It's just like a pin on your, on your footprint. And here's the pad we're talking about. Where can we find this? Which layer can we find this? Well, we would go to the stack up conductor pin. You can turn everything off and turn that to top on and it shows up. Finally, let's look at the 50% paste reduction on thermal pad broken into squares. This would ideally be defined in a special shape symbol using pad stack editor and embedded onto this pad definition. But we can't always do that. It's time consuming, you know, maybe it's not there once you download the footprint from somewhere or you forget to create it. So what do you do? You can add rectangles. Well, shapes really, you would choose shape rectangular and then select. If you go here, if you go to options, you can select package geometry Paste mask top layer. Let's turn everything on. And then it shows up as this little square here. See? But is, this can get a little confusing. So let me turn everything off. Turn the copper pads on. And only turn on geometry, package geometry, paste mask top. See the squares, the boxes? Why is this useful? Because, because, let me get out of this shape placement mode. It's useful because we can turn that on and also turn on our stack up non-conductor pin paste mask top. This is what we want our stencil to look like. So when we have our stencil or for a paste mask or a paste, solder paste, the stencil gets created from the paste mask, which shows here. The stencil creates the inverse of that. It gets put on the PCB solder paste gets squeegeed onto the printed circuit board and then this is the grid we have we want little drops of paste on the pcb exposed copper so when the device is actually placed on the pcb and heated up then the solder melts and it melts evenly across there for a better explanation you can go to my PCB footprint video. All right, let's turn on all the layers and click apply then OK. All right, and that was a lot, but we are done going through the different classes and subclasses that PCB editor uses to define the various layers and elements we need for the ideal PCB footprint or land pattern. Now you have a fundamental understanding of the ideal footprint. As long as you include everything we talked about in this video within your PCB footprint, you'll always make reliable land patterns for your projects and your clients. As an added benefit, you'll have fewer problems when your finished printed circuit board designs. For more information, check out my video where I explain the details of why we use these different parts of a PCB footprint and how important they are to manufacturing high quality printed circuit boards with fewer issues for you and your manufacturer. Thanks for watching.